Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Wednesday, June the 5th, and I hope your day is blessed. Well, a blessing for me is to be here with the Reverend Brandon Dirks, who has recently come back home, so to speak, from yeah. Europe. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. I'm very <laughs> tired. but Well, we'll it was back. quite a trip. How long were you over there? 16 days. My goodness. My goodness. So, Brandon and others traveled to Slovakia, as well as Ukraine. and uh, this As well been, as Poland. As well as Poland. So, tell us, how was it? Well, first of all, it's an enormous privilege to be representing this church um, with our team of, of four total to go to Poland, Slovakia, and into Ukraine. Um, and who are your other team members? Let's so the other team everybody. members are uh, uh, Brett Logan, Karen Perry, and Grant Jeffries. Um, and also Teresa Stewart uh, rendezvoused with you, although she was not on the team, but I understand she met up with you there. Yeah, that was an interesting surprise because one of our partners, which is the Wesley Theological Institute, was doing an immersion tour and they were doing of Slovakia and they were doing a mission component and it happened to coincide with the same place, same time, and actually the same Ukrainian community in Slovakia that we were working with. Wonderful. So it was neat to kind of run into her That's great. and partner with her as well. So you started in Slovakia, right? We started in Krakow, Poland, okay. uh, and explored what the Jewish Community Center there was doing. They're doing amazing work with uh, Ukrainian refugees there. Um, and then we traveled into Zelina, Slovakia, and worked with the Ukrainian community there. Um, and some interesting and great stories emerged out of that. And what sort of work were you doing with them there? We were basically uh, meeting and greeting and developing relationships with that community, uh, exploring potential ways that we can continue in ministry with them. Originally, the plan was to host a camp with children mm -hmm. coming from Ukraine into that area, but because of recent attacks in Russia, mm -hmm. um, they were unable to send the kids, but so instead we pivoted and decided to work with the community that was already there. And uh, we were actually get able to do some of the uh, first things with them, which is pulled that community together because they've never done that before. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit scattered around the city. And so we were able to take uh, mothers and their sons on some tours of castles and, and sheep farms and things like that. And then we hosted uh, a large cookout with the entire Ukrainian community there. And that was really a special, some special times. So these are refugees from Ukraine who are in this portion, this region of, of Slovakia. Right, right. Okay. And, and the biggest part of the whole trip was really getting to know them and and um, giving them an opportunity to tell us their stories. Mm -hmm. And that's the huge biggest takeaway is hearing these grieving stories, painful stories, one after another after another. Um, Do any of those stand out for you? Uh, one in particular is uh, Victoria from actually the Jewish Community Center in Krakow. She... Um, left Kharkiv, Ukraine at the beginning of the war, she was pregnant, mm -hmm. a couple of months pregnant. And when she left the country, uh, she was looking for a place and had a very difficult time finding a place in Europe that would welcome her and um, take care of her because uh, she was alone. And she described her journey out, which was on a train just packed with people where they were sitting three or four deep her seat mm -hmm. and she's pregnant only carrying the backpack of clothes that's all she had left she ended up having her baby in Barcelona and still was always feeling like she was being pushed out of wherever mm -hmm. she was going until she found her way to Krakow mm -hmm. and the Jewish community there really embraced her really helped take care of her in those early days with the baby mm -hmm. and I got to see the baby it's now two years old and our team got to play Legos with them and we did some dances with them. But her story of grief, you can just tell on her face that, uh, and she even said that it was God that led her to this place in, in uh, Krakow. So there's much, much more to that story and stories in general. But um, So there are stories of hope, but they're mostly all come from a place of pain. Mm. And then the third place you were, we're actually in Western Ukraine. Yes, we went into the Western Ukraine um, 
and work with the United Methodist Church there, which is absolutely fantastic. In fact, Brett told me, Brett Logan, who was on the with me there, uh, as we were leaving there, he made a comment that he may have thought was small, but I thought was really big. He goes, I am so proud of the United Methodist Church because of what they're doing there and the partnership that we have with them. They actually have several things going on. One in particular is they bought a hotel and are housing what they call displaced Ukrainians there because they're not refugees until they leave the country. So we talk about 30 million refugees leaving the country. That does not include all the, the displaced Ukrainians who are still in the country. And in this hotel, they have two or three families mm. living per room in this place. Mm. And so we got to live with them in this place for five days, four days, really, and uh, got to hear their stories and things like that. Um, they also have some other short-term um, uh, places. But one of the coolest memories I have with there is I didn't know this ahead of time, but they invited me to preach at their church. And so I got to preach at two United Methodist churches there. I uh, really pray that I represented our church. <laughs> I'm sure you did. How, how did that go? I think it went really well. It's hard to preach when you have to pause every sentence with an mm -hmm. interpreter. Sure. Um, but uh, I think it went really well. Um, you know, Brett and Grant both told me that I did a really good job. And mm -hmm. what else are they going to say? <laughs> But it was, it was one of my more meaningful experiences. Oh, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Well, anything else that you can think back as you reflect on your experience there that you'd like to share today? Um, I, I'm just really touched that this church, and this is the message I really want to get out, and thank you for this opportunity, that this church really is interested in being involved in a relevant way um, with people that are halfway across the world. Mm. Um and when it's not a completely sure of what difference we're really making, um, that this church, that this is the kind of church that cares for people here in Charlotte, here in our region, and all the way around the world. It is really an impressive thing. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Um, are there possibly future opportunities for members of our congregation? Absolutely. Um, we're, of course, going to meet with the... Um, with the Mission Council mm -hmm. and kind of debrief with the Mission Council on June 23rd. Uh, I think you've invited me to preach. I'm sure there will be stories that are going to come out on that Sunday. Um, and then also on July the 14th during the One Room Schoolhouse in Wolf Hall where all the adult classes mm -hmm. are invited to come together. Um, Teresa Dunn, our uh, Director of Adult Discipleship, invited our team to make a presentation. So I hope you all come out. Very good, very good. Well, um, while I've got you, there's uh, some big things happening with regard to the Charlotte Rescue Mission uh, this weekend, in yeah, fact. Yeah. Right? One of our biggest uh, mission, local mission partners, Charlotte Rescue Mission, uh, this coming Sunday will be dedicating their new uh, men's uh, building at 3 o'clock, invited the community, invited us since we're one of the partners. Mm -hmm. So if you can come out there, come out there at 3 o'clock. Um, the, our church bought a paver stone in their patio to so go and look for that and to see uh, what an amazing ministry the Charlotte Rescue Mission does with uh, addiction recovery in our community. And one more thing about what Charlotte Rescue Mission is, they're transitioning into their new building. They don't have use of their kitchens and our own Elaine Foster has volunteered to cook them a meal on Tuesday, June uh, the 11th. Uh, for 150 men wow. and uh, so she's asking the congregation to help out by uh, bringing donations of individual um, potato chips uh, mm -hmm. by this Sunday so she can bring them over there on on Tuesday so the small bags of potato small chips bags. in other words yeah any flavors yeah. And, and where do we drop them off here at the church at the front desk okay fantastic Fantastic. Well, Brandon, welcome again. Welcome Thanks. back home. And uh, so glad that everyone got there safely and got back safely. But praise the Lord for the wonderful experiences that you had in representing our church. Uh, so we thank you very much. Glad to do it, really.